Okay, so this is the sound check. Yep, sound check one, two, three, one, two. How are you doing? Good, good, Bill. How are you doing? Very good, thanks. Good, okay, let's try it. So, Bill, today we're going to talk about um, the Soviet aid to the Ankara government okay. during the Kurtul Savaşı, yep. uh, Turkish War of Liberation, TWL. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we start, let's remind everybody we're not historians, we're just history buffs. We're collectors everybody do your own research yeah. <laughs> don't take our word as the gospel gospel exactly that's we're the word guys i was looking with for passion exactly we have we're people with passion yeah. trying Ac to bring it to the people yes <laughs> accessing information is very easy nowadays yeah. do your own research uh, and i will try to put a bunch of resources uh, written by academics, historians underneath every video. So that those are the ones at least we mm -hmm. we refer to. Everybody can uh, go do their own research. Okay. So saying that, um, let us start with the, the Soviet aid uh, to the Ankara government. Okay. So um, how this came about is I recently read an article which is not an unknown article, it's out there. It's just that I happened to stumble, stumble upon it. And I was very surprised with two things. Mm -hmm. And number one was the type of rifles that the Soviets sent to the Ankara government. Mm -hmm. Because we, or at least I, always assumed they sent the Mosin Nagants, which the story was completely different. Okay, but before we go further, then why don't you tell us a little bit about the, the Mosin Nagant? Okay, well, um, uh, the little knowledge that I do know is that um, this weapon was basically a development out of the disastrous Russo-Turkish War of 1877. The Russians got decimated during that uh, war. Um, and they found themselves needing to upgrade and change uh, to a more efficient uh, and lethal weapon than the one that they had. They so, actually, so they actually, they won the war big time, but mm -hmm. they got decimated in an infantry level, yes. especially like at Plevna, I think, yes, right? Yeah, that's yes, the so I mean, they, they, the losses were staggering. So they had to rethink, they were like, okay, well, let's, let's rethink <laughs> you know, our uh, weaponry. So they, they went ahead and they designed this, which is the 1891 Mosin Nagant. So as you can see here, beautiful weapon. This one in particular was manufactured in 1919. So it's obviously very rare. And, and this is it essentially is that... Um, the Russians began to deliver these, uh, from what I have read, uh, in 1921. So uh, the shipments began then, and they went through all the way through to 1922. So um, a lot of the photographs that I see of the war, you see a lot of the Turkish troops using this, this gun. And they also used it during World War I because the Germans caught a lot of these uh, during the early part of uh, World War I in uh, 1914. I think it was the Battle of the Caucasus. And what they did was, is they rechambered them to eight millimeter and they sent them to the Turks uh, along with the other aid, such as the uh, Gewehr 1888 and the Gewehr 98. So yeah, these were, you know, the, the guns that they sent, they were, pretty, you know, largely used. So the uh, the Turkish army during the uh, TWL mm -hmm. was already familiar with the Mosin because they've been using the Mosin since yes. World War One. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But um, the ones that they were using in World War One were Imperial, right? And these were made by the Bolsheviks because as you know, uh, the uh, the Russian Tsar fell in 1917, and then they took over the uh, factories. And if you can see here, if I can show you, this is 1919, and it's made by Tula. And you can see that the hammer is there, and the date. Yeah. So there's no imperial markings here. So Pure Bolshevik. 
yeah. Soviet Bolshevik markings. So, Bill, here's a, a few interesting facts about the Mosins. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the Germans mm -hmm. capturing the Mosins at the beginning of the uh, First World War. Yep. So, apparently, it was the Battle of Tannenberg. Yep. Uh, somewhere, I don't know exactly where it is. I think um, maybe modern day Poland. Mm -hmm. I believe so. Somewhere yeah. there. Yeah. And they decimated two complete Russian armies. And they captured hundreds of thousands of these puppies of Mosins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they um, armed four German divisions with Mosins. So four German divisions went into the war with Mosins. Also the German home guard, mm -hmm. the entire home guard. And they had leftovers. They armed the German Navy with Mosins, with those captured Mosins. And then the Austro-Hungarian army, oh, wow. and then the Turks, the Ottomans. Yeah, so they were used mostly for rear guard, for rear guard, uh, yes. support troops. Yes. So they used these to free up as many of the more uh, valuable uh, Gewehr 98s to the frontline troops, so that they used these to arm everyone else, uh, support troops, probably. But yes. But as the Turks were losing weapons due to uh, attrition as the war went, went on from 1916, 17, and 18. They had to send these just to try to fill that hole that because they were losing so many uh, weapons, and, you know. So here's an inter another interesting fact. Um, Russia ordered 3.3 million Mosins from United States. Yes. That you know because yes. you owned yes. a Mosin at some point mm -hmm. that was manufactured in the United States. Well, yeah, from two uh, places. Yes, Westinghouse mm -hmm. and Remington. Yes. And apparently what happened is when the um, Bolsheviks took over, so they could no longer deliver, they would no longer deliver. Right, it was a debt that they didn't want to uh, Exactly. Pay. Plus, the Bolsheviks were the enemy now. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, and they were left with 1.5 million Mosins in the United States. And United States military used the Mosins. Training. Yes. And as a matter of fact, when they invaded uh, Siberia mm -hmm. to fight against the Bolsheviks, they call it the, the Polar Bear ex Expedition. Yep. The, their troops were uh, armed with the Mosins. Yep. Logistical uh, yes, reasons. It was exactly. Easier. They figured they can use captured ammo. And, and I mean, it's like uh, today. The government bailed them out. Yes. And the Bolsheviks saw the Americans as imperialists. Yes. Oh, you know, we don't want to deal with imperialists, so we're not going to pay you. So, uh, yeah. So they sent the army there, and they sent all these guns, and I'll let you continue. So um, another thing that I had uh, found out about these is um, the U.S. Mosins, the ones that went over there, okay? Two things happened. One is some of the troops left some of these, and they ended up in the hands of the white armies, uh, and some of them were actually captured. Uh, they, these guns ended up, along with the former white army soldiers that were routed, they all ended up in uh, Constantinople, which is uh, present day, as everyone knows, uh, Istanbul. So that was another source. So these ended up in uh, Istanbul, and they ended up uh, in nationalist hands, along with the other guns. And that's it. So here's another fact, an interesting fact I, I found out. We, we, refer, uh, we refer to the the rifle as the Mosin Nagant. Mm -hmm. Apparently in the Soviets, they or in the Russian Empire, then the Soviets, they only referred to it as Mosin. Mm. Because Nagant was uh, European. Ah, yes. I, he was a Frenchman, no? A, Fr a, Belgian, a Belgian or, or something. something. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. So that's they good, did not good. want to use the, Interesting. the Nagant name. It's only in the Russian books, in the Soviet oh, books, wow, it's only as Mosin. And uh, so for them to call it Mosin Nagant wasn't 
yearly and merely enough. Mm -hmm. It's Never mind. Sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'm going to go brush up on my Turkish. <laughs>